Hey Google Ads fans and welcome back. Before we go into Excel and get too deep into keyword organization and things like that, I want to take a pause and go back into the Google Keyword Planner because the first time we went there we were talking about getting keyword ideas, but it's also a really useful tool for getting traffic and cost estimates, building out a plan, getting actually conversion estimates, and it's really useful to know your way around the Google Keyword Planner, um, this part of the, the Keyword Planner. So let's go back into Google Ads. So here we are in our dashboard, we have our office chairs campaign, but pretend that we're continuing to build out the office chair campaign. And I'm doing this, you're following along with me step by step, building out a campaign for Poppin, it's not a real client, um, but this could be done for any single company. So the point of this course overall, just to take a step back, is to give you theory, is to give you concepts, it's for you to understand the proper process, the proper technique, uh, the fundamental theories of managing and creating profitable Google Ads accounts. That's the whole purpose. So throughout the course setting up the settings, you guys, we've all sort of followed along step by step. That's been great. Now we're getting into the part where I'm teaching you lots of different things that are available and you're now supposed to apply that knowledge to your specific business. So it could be, you know, researching SEMrush and, and getting some estimates uh, getting some ideas through Uber Suggest or some other tool is sufficient. It could be that doing it all in the Google Keyword Planner works. It could be doing this manually inside the live UI works for you. Um, depending on the size of your business, your budget, the amount of products, the amount of services, um, your conversion goals, what you're trying to get out of the campaigns, the value, it, it all is going to impact the proper procedure for you to follow. So I wanted to just point that out because I'm not going to go through the Google Keyword Planner for every single type of business that would take an enormous amount of time and it would be a waste of your time because if I'm doing a good job as an instructor then you're coming away with the proper concepts that you can then apply in the right in your right context or situation. So here we are back in the campaign and say we're continuing to build out this office chairs campaign. So office chairs, desk chairs, computer chairs, ergonomic chairs, etc. We're trying to get a lit, you know, we're trying to figure out the proper structure, the proper bidding strategies that we want to start off with. So I'm going to click again GT for go to. If you don't do that, you can click escape and you can go to tools and again the keyword planner and presented with two options. So the first one we did was find new keywords in a few, you know, a few lectures back, but now we're going to get search volumes and forecasts. Okay, so we'll click this and we can do a couple different things. We could either upload a file of keywords or we could paste in keywords or type in keywords separated by commas. So we're going to um, type in some keywords, office chairs, desk, desk chairs, white office chairs, ergonomic office chairs, um, swivel chairs, that was a new one we found. And that's enough, and I'm going to go ahead and click get started. And you can always come back and edit this later on. So as you remember from the first time we looked at this screen, we could change the location settings. So let's say I want to switch back from New York to the entire United States. I'm going to, I'm going to remove New York, and I'm going to type in United States, and choose the country so I get a most accurate assessment of my keyword volume. And we could also change language and the search network, Google and Google Search Partners, but and keep those as is. So here we have an overview. Google is telling me that I can get 49,000 clicks for these keywords that are right down below here for $76,000 and a $2 max CPC. And we could change these things around. Right over here, you're, taking, you're looking at an output of the uh, keywords that we typed in. And one of the distinctive differences between what we're doing here and what we did in SEMrush is SEMrush was spitting out a list of ideas based on the original keywords we gave Google. Um, even the Google Keyword Planner, when we got keyword ideas, was spitting out a whole list of potential ideas. This is like, okay, these are the specific keywords we want to have in our ad groups. Let's get some estimates. Let's see what we're, what we're doing here. So right away, I could, I could sort by clicks. I could see, okay, what is the keyword that I'm likely to get the most clicks for? Well, Office chairs. Office chairs seems to be the most broad. Google's suggesting that I can get 27,000 clicks a month, 552,000 impressions for a click rate of 4.9%, and an average CPC of $1.55. Now, this is all based on a max CPC bid of $2 for that keyword, but I could edit that. I can go in and say, hey, maybe what would happen if I made my max CPC bid $4? And I click save. Well, Google then tells me I'm going to get more clicks, a lot more impressions, not much higher of a CTR. Um, more spend on that keyword and a higher CPC. Let's say I put that to 30 cents and I click save. So Google actually reset that 30 cent bid to $2 because it was too little. They're not going to give me estimates based on that. Maybe I can, if I try a dollar and I click save and I have fewer clicks, 
Um, actually a higher CTR in Google's estimates, although that's likely to not happen in, in the real world, an 85 um, cent CPC um, and much, much lower cost. So you could play around with these things. Again, don't assume that this is exactly what's going to happen once the keywords are live in your account. It's, that's, it's unlikely that things will line up exactly this way. So I usually don't mess around with, with changing the bids too much here. Um, I don't think it's, it makes that much of a difference. And I just realized I made a little bit of a mistake. You guys probably caught the mistake a couple seconds ago. Um, I did when I changed those bits to thirty cents. They actually just got got brought down to the bottom of the list. Um, I thought that Google just wasn't going to give us estimates, but it looks like they do. So if I have an office chair bid at thirty cents, Google's predicting here. You go um, much fewer clicks. Swivel chairs at thirty cents. Um, you know the impressions. Obviously, minuscule cost over the course of a month. Don't worry about CTR. It's inaccurate and you know, 25 cent clicks. Now this doesn't even mean that you could get 30 cent clicks. It's very possible that if I put a bid at 30 cents for office chairs, I would get no clicks and no impressions. And I might get a warning sign inside of Google Ads that says your, your bid is too low to, to be on the first page or something like that. It might happen, it might not. But again, it's, it's fun to play around and get an idea. And if your client is asking you for these different estimates, you could certainly tell him or tell him or her in the beginning and saying, or the team you're working with saying, hey, like, Google's predicting that if our bid was 30 cents, these would be the results. Google's predicting that if our bid was $1.50, these would be the results of this keyword over the course of a month with these location and these different settings and things like that. Um, so that's definitely something uh, worth looking into and worth thinking about. There's a really cool thing here with uh, conversion metrics, which is a new feature. So if I click on add conversion metrics, I could actually predict what my um, conversion rate and return on ad spend will be based on some predefined values. So conversion rate, Google doesn't know your conversion rate for these keywords, obviously, because they're not keywords that are active, it's not a live account. But say you know your conversion rate. If you know your previous conversion rate, then go ahead and enter that in, Give, take an average. Again, these are just ballpark estimates. If you've never run a campaign before, if you're e-commerce, do something like 1, 1 to 1.5%. 1 if you're lead gen and you're getting trying to get form submits, do something like 45 to 6.5% to be conservative. We have lead gen campaigns running at a 25% conversion rate. We have e-commerce campaigns running at a, at a 5% conversion rate. Uh, but again, go ahead with the estimates. So say we'll do 2% and our value per conversion. Value per, per conversion could be whatever you want it to be. It could, it could include all your costs. So it could be like a total profit. It could be a gross revenue. Um, or it could be like when you know your average checkout value, your average order value. So say Poppin's average order value is probably something around 350 bucks. So we'll go ahead and click save. And now Google could actually tell you the total conversions you're going to have for your budget. So Google's estimating that I'll get 80 conversions at an average um, CPA of $46, $28,000 worth of revenue because you take that $350, you take that $350 multiplied by 80, you get 28k for a ROAS of 7.6, which is a return on ad spend. So for every dollar spent on advertising, I'm going to earn back $7.60 in, in advertising cost. So if my if my cost is over the course of the month is 3.7 thousand, and I earn $28,000 in revenue, that's $7.60 for every dollar spent on advertising brought back in. Now, that does, does that mean you're profitable? Well, I don't know. So if you were just giving a total revenue um, when, you, when you entered in those conversion values, then you have no, I have no idea if you're profitable because you need to know your, your actual margins. Are you earning $35 in profit on, on a $350 order? Are you earning $200 in profit on a $350 order? That goes into talking about ROI, and we'll talk about calculating ROI and calculating ROAS in, the, in a section where we talk about formulas. But say you wanted to get a sense of your profitability, so you could simply go ahead and, and edit this 350 to not to not reflect your total checkout value, but instead to reflect what your profit is. So say I know that my profit margins are 40%. So I could take three and which which basically in English is saying for every 350 per dollars in, in, in advertising or for every dollar, I make 40 cents. 40 cents of that is profit. So I would say so so you do $350 multiply by 40%, that's $140, right? So say $140 is my value per conversion. You can put that in and I click save, All right? So now my ROAS is three times. So for every dollar I'm gonna earn, every dollar spent on advertising, I'm gonna earn $2 back in profit. Uh, and you can make these estimates, and again, you could send these estimates to clients. Um, you could look at them for yourself. It's, it's very, very, very helpful. If you expand this, you could, you could take a look at different metrics on how your max CPC would affect overall conversions. So that's the default. So if I say, oh, okay, at a $5 max CPC, I'm gonna get more conversions. I'm gonna get, you know, an average uh, 110 conversions a month instead of 80 conversions a month. Um, if I wanna take a look at uh, average CPA, 
I can say, okay, my max CPC, how will my max CPC affect average CPA? My cost per acquisition, my cost per conversion. If I look at cost, the overall cost of the campaigns, I could say, all right, how will my max CPC, will bidding more or less affect how much I ultimately spend? And again, to go back to what I always talk about of profitability, the most important thing to predict and try to predict is profitability. So take a look at conversions and conversion value, but most importantly, return on ad spend. That's where you wanna be. You wanna be maximizing your return on ad spend nine times out of 10. So in this graph, we actually see as our cost per click increases, our return on ad spend goes down. So there's a sweet spot between the right amount of profit and also the right amount of value. So you could lower your bid, right? You could have a bid of a dollar or 50 cents or 30 cents and have a higher return on ad spend but you're gonna have much fewer conversions. You're gonna ultimately generate less dollars in profit. So there's gonna be a sweet spot of you're willing to cut into your return on ad spend, you're willing to take a little bit less of a profit margin if you could get more profit, if you could ultimately walk away with more money in the bank account. That's the most important metric. How much money am I actually generating? Now in this case, we're looking at you know one, two, three, four, five individual keywords. We could upload a whole list of keywords and we can get much more sophisticated estimates, but this is a really good place to get these traffic and cost estimates. And I would say that these are more accurate predictions than you're gonna get in SEMrush. I could head over to the negative keywords section and I could add negative keywords to my campaign. So let's say I wanted to add negative keywords like free Amazon Walmart, let's say, and click save. Now these negative keywords have been adding to my plan, and I could also click on historical metrics to take a look at, over time, the, the search trends broken down by mobile and desktop uh, for the keywords that, are, that I've uploaded into this list. Uh, so I could take a look at locations and get a locations report. Uh, if I break it down, we sort of went through this uh, briefly in a, in a previous lecture. I could look at my ad groups. Back in my ad groups is this one ad group. I could edit the name of the ad group. Say I wanna call this um, office chairs. I'm gonna call this test because we already have one in the campaign. I can go up into my plan overview and say, okay, here's my plan overview. These are the predictions for the keywords that I have. Um, these are the locations that I'm targeting where we expect to see $2,000 on, on mobile phones of cost, 3,000 clicks, 49,000 impressions, uh, fewer on tablets, a little bit, you know, le still less on mobile phones in the yellow, but, but, but less but on desktop rather, but less than mobile phones, more than tablets, tablets the red, the smallest amount of impressions, cost and clicks. Um, you know, really, really awesome. I could download this report into Excel, but what's really neat is I could actually go ahead and create this campaign. So if I went ahead and clicked create campaign, I could make a new campaign. Let's call this um, planner campaign. I give it, I can, I could either set my own budget or give it the recommended budget. I usually like to set my own budget. So that's how I wanna do $50 a day um, and click save. Really simple, really easy. So like we could really build the whole thing. Congratulations, your new campaign is almost ready. And I can go ahead and create ads for that campaign or start a new plan in Google Keyword Planner. So if I click start a new plan, it brings me back to where I can either be finding new keyword ideas or get search volume and forecast and go out and build a campaign. If I wanna go into my account to make sure that campaign imported properly, I click the back arrow. And here we see now in the left-hand side, planner campaign with this ad group that I just named with the keywords that I have in it um, with the bids. And that's something which is really cool. So the bids that I, were, that I was working on inside Google Keyword Planner in, were inherited by this new campaign. They imported properly. So I have a dollar here, 30 cents, and then $2 were the default ones I haven't changed at all. So it's really, really neat. I can go into my planner campaign settings and now I can go ahead and manage this campaign um, from scratch. So you could use the planner campaign to build out full campaigns with ad groups. But the one thing that we don't have is ad copy. So if we look at ads, there's no ads. We'd have to go and create our ads manually. Um, and we're gonna work on building out this account manually as we go along. Last thing about the Google Keyword Planner, I typically don't use it to build campaigns. I typically don't use it, and I don't recommend you guys using the Google Keyword Planner to really build out a complete campaign and ad groups um, structure and then import it back into AdWords. I like, to go th I like to go through things methodically. I like to make sure I'm setting up all my campaign settings properly so I don't miss anything. I like to write ad copies as I'm going along. I like to um, manage my keywords really outside of AdWords in most cases. Uh, to get my keyword list and keyword ideas. But what, what I do use Google Keyword Planner for and what I recommend you using the Google Keyword Planner for is getting those forecasts, getting those trends, looking at the competition, getting new keyword ideas, um, seeing, but, but what I think is one of the most valuable things are is putting in that conversion rate and your value per conversion 
a daily budget, a max CPC, and getting these estimates, seeing, getting a sense of, oh, if I spend this amount and this is my profit per conversion, this is how many conversions I'm likely to get, and this is the profit I'm likely to, to earn and the revenue I'm likely to earn, the value I'm likely to generate from those campaigns at this level of spend at these, at these bids. And I think it's a really, really neat predictive tool and it's really fun to work with, and clients tend to see a ton of value in it. So that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead actually and pause this campaign. So I'm gonna go into all campaigns, campaigns up here, I'm just gonna pause this planner campaign and I'm gonna just look at my enabled campaigns because I don't wanna run that, that planner campaign, there's nothing going on for us there um, and we'll take it from there. So that's a good overview of how to use the Google Keyword Planner um, both for forecasting and for getting keyword research ideas and I think now at this point you understand keywords, you understand match types, you understand the dynamics of keywords, you understand negative keywords and you also understand really how to research keywords in a really, really sophisticated way. You have a lot of tools at your disposal. Um, any company that brings you an account, I think you're really well suited to uh, very, very professionally research keywords and, and part of that research is, is learning about the lingo of the business. There's going to be so many long tail keywords and just vocabulary that you might not be familiar with that these tools like Asking Friends, the Google Auto Suggest, SEMrush, the Google Keyword Planner, Uber Suggest, Suvel, um, asking people on the street, your own intuition, writing down ideas that these tools will uncover and you'll be so surprised and it'll be so impressive the types of negative keyword lists and positive keyword lists that you'll be able to put together. In the next couple lectures we're going to talk about uh, keyword organization, how to use Excel to start conceptualizing our themes and, and really structuring out um, the, the, the full scope and size of what a, a, a good campaign should look like. And again, this could be for e-commerce or for servant businesses. So with that, I look forward to seeing you guys very, very soon in the very next lecture.